What's up YouTube, Demi here on Flying Purple People, the level 92 Poison Bleed Lacerate Slayer. I've been crafting for the last couple of weeks, I think about a week and a half now. Um, this character is using a Starforge, I'll link the process of getting that to the 6 link video in the description and on the screen. But basically the point of this character was to make everything as purple as possible and then abuse the fact that Slayer gets an insane amount of leech from Brutal Fervor and Endless Hunger. To make a character that feels like it has Vol Pact, but without actually being Vol Pact related. So I guess we'll start with the Ascendancies. Uh, I went for Endless Hunger. This gives you a huge amount of leech, and it makes sure that your leech effects are not removed at full life. Now what that actually means is, as you're leeching and killing things, you can effectively pile up effective leech over your life pool. So like, if I take a hit right now after I've leeched off something, it'll just leech me back to full instantly without having to hit something else. I'll just like, as I do the map, it'll pile up this huge shield of life over my life that's just like waiting to be leeched as I take damage. So it's like a huge amount of regen, basically. Then you take more leech, more leech, and then you get Brutal Fervor. This gives you 100% increased life leech per second, which means that you can leech twice as fast as normal. Usually there's a capped amount of life leech per second. This gives you double that amount. And that also gives you cannot be stunned while leeching and immune to bleeding while leeching, which is really important for just general mapping clearing, and it saves you a couple points to get on Wavering Stance. Saves all your flask slots, so you don't need a bleed flask anymore. Basically, as long as you're hitting anything, or as long as you've hit things in the past, and you have leech left over your life pool, then you're immune to stun and bleeding, which is great. Then I went over here for the more attack speed and attack speed with two-handed weapons, and then this gives you 20% cull, and 20 seconds of onslaught whenever you kill a rare or unique. So this gives you a huge amount of clear speed, and then the 20% cull effect is amazing for boss fights and any hard rares. It's effectively 20% more damage in general, because if you hit something that's just below 20%, they just die. So it saves you one-fifth of the time that way you take hitting them anyway, so that's 20% more damage right there. And the Headsman node keeps you safe from Reflect Fizz Rare, since we are 100% physical damage. This one's really important for me personally, so that we don't kill ourselves to Reflect Rares. It doesn't allow us to Reflect Packs just because we hit too hard, but it's, it keeps you safe against Reflect Rares. That combined with the Life Leech is not removed at full life, and double leech you get, you like, if you take a reflect hit, it'll leech back to full instantly, so it's good. It also gives you another 20% more damage, so that's 20%, 20%, that's the same bonus that Berserker gets without losing, without taking increased damage, which is awesome. It also gives you increased AoE radius, or sorry, increased radius of area skills if you've killed recently, so you get a little bit more AoE for your last rate, so that's good. The tree is basically all the life, rather than the life nodes and AoE nodes, it's a standard melee build, there's just a few minor changes, because I'm using a sword, if you went axe or mace, you could do the opposite nodes, but it's basically just come out through Duelist, pick up a bunch of life, some life regen, life movement penalty, attack speed stuff, go through here, grab a bunch of two-handed damage nodes, grab Golem's Blood for a bunch of life, and a jewel socket. When you get this jewel socket, make sure you come up through the bottom. Dexterity is kind of an issue on this build, so if you went this way, you'd get strength versus 10 dex. This one's better. Um, all of my jewels are the same, they're all three property mostly, I think I made a couple four pros, but you want life and you want some kind of physical damage with whatever weapon that you want. You can use axes or swords with lacerate, so if you want axe, you should just look for physical damage with two-handed weapons, physical damage with axes, attack speed with two-handed weapons, physical damage, area damage, stuff like that. Then you come down here, you get wrecking ball, two-handed melee weapon bonus stuff, two-handed melee weapon bonus again. This is one of the things that aren't normally in a build like this, a two-handed build. I picked up a bunch of life leech nodes, so I can get more life leech per second. This gives us 20% there, and then I don't really know how these... This is another 20%, but this one is 3% of your maximum life per second to maximum life leech rate. I think that's your life regen per second, which is 372, so we get 3% of that, or 5% of that to our maximum life leech rate, which is okay. Let me pick up a jewel socket for the same thing. Taxi with swords, area damage, life, you know, all that good scaling stuff for us. Bloodless for more life. Blood magic, because I didn't feel like using my gem slots for auras. You don't need to go blood magic. You can reserve your auras or mana for other things if you want. But because we are for full physical, we can't use hatred, we can't use Herald of Bash. They don't do anything for us. So I just don't have that. And then we take the relevant damage nodes, two handed sword nodes, or just sword nodes in general, sorry. Blade Master and Razor's Edge. If again, if you went Axe, you could just take Cleaving and Slaughter instead of these nodes. Then we take some more Life nodes, grab a Jewel Socket, same thing. Two Ender Melee and Area Damage and Life, stuff like that. Come over here through Barbarism for more Life, some Res, pick up all of these two-handed damage nodes with Butchery, Born to Fight, more Melee Damage, more Life here. 
I need a little bit of dex and intelligence, so I picked this up through the bottom of Warrior's Blood. And I needed some res, so I picked that up as well. If you had better gear, you don't need these four nodes. You can get more life otherwise. Like, you get these nodes here for the rest of your life pool. But I don't have the stats on that on my gear, so I didn't get those. And I get RT. Got the Jewel Socket. This is the ones that we exalted. We exalted damage over time, but it was Fizz Damage with Swords, Life Area Damage, same as all the other jewels. Come here, grab Devotion. Um, this one we exalted Attack Speed on, but it was the same as before. Physical Damage with Swords, Maximum Life Area Damage, etc. Get some all res, get some AoE and area damage, attack damage, oh, sorry, melee damage, attack speed, strength intelligence, some bunch of life, and some more strength intelligence and regen. But that's the tree and ascendancies. Um, my gear looks like this. I have a six link Starforge. You don't need this. You could use a rare sword or rare axe. Either of those things will work with Lacerate. Just has to be an axe or sword two handed in this situation. If you didn't want to go two handed, you could just redo the tree to be one handed and shield or dual wield or whatever. But I'm using Starforge because it's purple, and I like purple things. As you can see, everything on this character is purple. Helm, I'm using a Devotos with increased lacerate radius. Definitely not required, uh, I just wanted the dex really. And the attack speed helps me move faster since I'm using Leap Slam as my main attack speed, or my main movement skill. The attack speed on this is really nice. Yeah, we get reduced physical damage, which hurts our initial hit and our bleed, but it gives us nice chaos rest, it gives us a ton of dex and decent armor evasion, so I went for this. Chest piece, again with the life leech theme, this gives us 100% increased life leech per second, Terubim's Maleficence. So with all of my life leech stuff, my actual life leech rate is 274%, which is insanely fast compared to like anything else. So this gives us a huge amount of life leech rate. Even if you don't want to wear this, you could wear a Calm's Heart, you could wear any other rare armor, you could wear a Belly of the Beast, like it doesn't matter, I just wanted to abuse the leech theme. And this also gives us increased chaos damage, so it scales our poison. Since we are using Void Heart, which is the next thing I was going to talk about. Void Heart gives you Bleed and Poison on hit. Since we are pure physical, this is a huge way to multiply our damage. Since neither of them count as elemental damage, it just gives us more DPS effectively, so that's great. Amulet, um, I needed a shitload of intelligence, so I got this thing. <laughs> um, it's got T1 flat fizz, which scales our damage a lot, but it has 24 in implicit, 53 in, 32 in all attributes, and then a shitload of strength as well and dex. So this is like everything we need, it just, I just wish I had better life roll, but I exalted the armor and then I just crafted the life back on it, so... It's a good amulet though. Ring, same thing, I needed the intelligence and I wanted more life. If, we, if that had been um, physical attack damage leads to life, I would have been much happier with this, but... It's fine as is. It's basically just life, intelligence, resist. Boots, same thing, life, resist. Um, move speed is nice, but I don't really need the move speed since I use Leap Slam primarily, but yeah. Life resist boots, whatever you want on them. Belt, same thing. Um, I'm using a Rustic Sash because it's physical damage, which increases our initial hit and our bleed and our poison. And then it's got life resistances, move speed, flash charges, gains. It's just a really nice belt in general. Gloves. Um, these are another way for us to multiply the life leech rate per second. Verici sells you things that have life leech. Here, let me see if I can find an example. I think I still have some left. He sells you gloves or amulets or rings that say increase life leech per second. To make these gloves, effectively, all I did was regal it, and I hit my life roll on it, so I then I multi-modded it for the resistances I need, and a little bit more life leech. Um, you don't need this, it just, like, it increases the theme that I was going for, life leech rate per second. So eventually, I would like to get it on my rings that I have, ring and amulet, but those are going to be very hard to replace, so I just have it on my gloves as right now. These ones are actually better than the ones that I have on. They have a higher life roll, but... I don't want to multi-mod them right now, so I'm just using the ones that I made before. Um, that being said, that's all of our gear, I believe. So then we go to... I want to show you the leech percentages. Let's see, where is it? Is it going to show me? Main, main hand life leech from physical attacks, 3.78%. And then I have an additional 0.4% life leech from attacks. So I have over 4% life leech per hit, basically which is a massive amount of leech. Um, if you don't have a Legacy Void Heart, you can use a non-Legacy and then use... Or you can use a Disfavor, which has bleeding on hit, and you can just link poison instead of faster attacks in your main links. And you'll get the same effect as this, and be able to use another damage scaling life resist ring, like this for instance. This is a beautiful ring, we made this ourselves on stream. This is my hot swap for Void Heart if I don't have... Like, if I'm fighting somebody that's bleed immune and poison immune, I just take it out and put this in for more damage per second, effectively. But I usually just use Void Heart. Um, 
What else is there? Gem links, I guess. So the main links for your lacerate, use lacerate um, melee damage on full life because of our instant leech basically back to full. We're almost at, always at full life. As long as you don't use blood rage, you will be at full life 98% of the time. So this is great for just a huge more multiplier to our melee fizz since it's pretty hard to scale melee fizz normally without using auras. That's a huge multiplier to our damage. So next link, melee physical damage. Same thing, more melee fizz per, per hit. It's great, gives us a bunch of extra damage. Then we're using multi-strikes so we can hit really, really fast and stack poison stacks faster. And then faster attacks again, so we can just hit faster. It just gives us more quality of life, basically, so we're not caught multi-striking in channeling mode as much. And then our last link, this is an optional link. I chose this because it gives us 15% chance of shock, which is another 50% more multiplier for our damage if we can shock something. And we hit so fast that almost everything is shocked continuously. So this gives us another way to scale our 50% more melee physical damage. And if they're shocked, they take 50% more damage from bleed poison as well. So that's just good. If you don't want to use that, you can use increased AoE for some insane AoE. But I feel like this isn't even my full AoE. This is without the Slayer 20% more AoE if you've killed recently, etc. But I usually don't need it, so I just use Innervate. Unless this, the map says you cannot be affected by status ailments or whatever, then I switch out to increased AoE. And then for boss fights, you can always put in conk effect if they can't be shocked or whatever. And your DPS spikes according. So with Innervate, my DPS is somewhere around 45k with no... No, like, buffs or anything. Um, other links I'm using, Enduring Cry and Vengeance, just because I had random links open. Vengeance actually hits really hard with this. It's 5k average damage <laughs> that bleeds and poisons, so it's pretty good. Then I'm using a cast damage damage taken arc setup, which is another way for me to shock things. 20% chance to shock enemies. This should actually be level 1, so it just spams everywhere. The cast damage damage taking arc setup should be level 1 and level 8 arc with 20% quality. The quality is what gives you the chance to shock, so the lower level of cast damage damage taking you have, the more it will spam out the arc, which will give you more chances to shock things. Other links... We have a cast damage damage taken level 1 with curse on hit, blade fall. I'm, yeah, curse on hit, blade fall with enfeeble. So that does what that does is effectively every time we take a hit, it like a small hit, 500 damage, it casts blade fall, which has huge AOE because of the quality and because of our slayer and AOE nodes. So it hits everything with enfeeble. If you wanted more DPS, you could use vulnerability in this slot, but I prefer the survivability of enfeeble, so I use that. Other links, I'm using a cast damage taken, immortal call which gives us immunity to physical damage every time we take 2.8k damage, which is about 30-40% uh, of our life, and then Enduring Cry to keep up the Endurance charges. And I also have that link with Essence Drain and Contagion. Again, these are just personal preference. They're purple. I like purple things. So I'm using these because they're both purple. And they deal chaos damage and damage over time, and they give us a little bit of extra life regen, so that's good. Um, the Chess Beast links, it's a 6 link. This is totally optional 6 link. You do not need this at all. It could be a 4 link. It could just be Flicker Strike, and Fortify, and Leap Slam, and Faster Attacks. But I added Endurance Charge on Melee Stun, and Culling Strike. Culling Strike because the quality gives it increased attack and cast speed. I know we have Slayer 20% call, but this is purely so it gets a little bit more attack and cast speed. Makes our a little bit faster. The Endurance Charge on Melee Stun, every time I leap into a pack, because it hits so hard, it's 13k DPS, it almost always gives us an Endurance Charge, which means that I don't have to use Enduring Cry that often only usually against bosses. If I just leap into a pack, I get an Endurance Charge, so it refreshes the stack duration for our Immortal Call. The Fortify, this saves us a link in our main 6 link, so I can use melee damage on full life or faster attacks or one of these links instead of Fortify, and we pretty much have 100% Fortify duration all the time. I'm using Flicker Strike for those weird boss fights where they are hard to leap onto, and I just want to auto-target, so I just flicker right onto the boss and get Fortify. But you don't need those links at all. You just you just really want Leap Slam, Faster Text, Fortify. And I guess you could put Endurance Charge on my list on for your 4 link. The Flicker and the Culling Strike, totally optional, not needed at all. So now I'll show you a map. This is a T15 Colosseum with minus max. To demonstrate the leech effect, the massive life leech rate per second bonuses, 274% and our 4% leech. So basically you just jump into the map and you hit things. And then once you hit things, you have this leech over your life, and I will show you how it works. So I'm not going to hit anything here. I'm just going to take damage, and it's going to leech me back to full. And all of the damage that I've already leeched, it will keep leeching until it runs out. Which is a lot, obviously, since we hit that first pack really hard. 
it's it's really good. It feels like you have Vol Pact, and as you can see, I don't actually carry a life potion here because I feel like I don't need it. I'm just carrying five utility potions, which I just didn't really talk about, so we'll do that while I'm just standing here holding R. Using a taste of hate for the fizz mitigation, not so much for the cold damage since we can't actually convert any of our fizz to cold because lacerate or sorry. Because Starforge says you cannot deal any non-physical damage. Or no, oh, sorry, you can't deal any elemental damage. So that would do nothing for our DPS. And I'm using a Stib Knight with a Moon D2 Freeze and Chill. It gives us a blind chance, which is a huge multiplier when you're using Enfeeble to your not being hit chance because it blinds them and then Enfeeble checks their accuracy as well, reduced accuracy rating, and then this blinds them, which is another like 50% reduced accuracy. It makes it really hard to hit us. And then I'm using a Lion's Roar Basalt, uh, Lion's Roar Granite Flask, which gives us 35% more melee physical damage. Again, another way to scale our DPS without any elemental damage added in. It also has a nice bonus of shoving everything the hell away from you, so you can play as a quote-unquote ranged character. <laughs> melee, whatever. There's a Void, that's cool. But that helps. And then our last class is the Zeri's Promise, which gives you 25% of your physical damage, which is literally all we have to scale as Chaos Damage. So that's a huge buff as well to our DPS. So as you can see, with full everything, we're at 103.6k DPS, all of which is physical and Chaos. So that scales the hell out of our Bleed Poison stacks and makes it for a relatively safe build, I mean. I've done every Guardian with this. I've not done Shaper yet, but I can do every Guardian, especially Chimera. Chimera is the easiest one, because he does bleed and you're immune to bleed, so it doesn't matter much. But yeah, it's pretty fun. I'm enjoying the build so far. It's a very fast clearing build. It's very tanky. You have 7k life without a Calms. You have a huge rate of life leech. You have Immortal Call. You have Enfeeble. You have Blind. You have Knockback. Like, it just feels good in general. But yeah, if you want a fast-paced ranged melee build, this is probably a build for you. It's relatively cheap if you don't use Disfavor or Starforge, just use a good rolled rare and you'll be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and beeline to this boss real quick so we can end the guide. You don't really need any of the expensive things that I have. But yeah, there's the flicker to get fortify, and you just kind of beat on the boss. He's enfeebled. We have Fortify, we can't actually out-damage our Leech. Ooh. See that Leech rate? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm also using Zip Assault with Remove Freezing Chill as well. Or sorry, Remove Shock. Yeah. But yeah, you just kind of get to do whatever you want. Like, I can stand in these for a while. Doesn't work, because I have so much Leech built up already. It's great. And then you get 20% call on bosses, so... That is the Poison Lacerate Slayer. Bloison, as I like to say on my stream. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. I will probably type out a forum guide for this at some point and put it on the forum so more people can find this build because I think it's really fun and it makes Lacerate like solid as hell without using much expensive gear. Because you don't need this, you don't need this, you don't need this. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that's Demi out. I'll see you next time.